So I recently got a comment on a video suggesting that I go through all of the CS classes I took in college and put them on a tier list. And honestly, I thought that was a pretty good idea. And if you guys have any other ideas for videos you might want to see or that might be useful, feel free to comment them down below. So just as some background, my major was math and computer science, and I went to UC San Diego. I graduated last June in 2020. I know, rough. So I ended up taking about 11 or 12 CS classes in total, as well as like a ton of other math classes. Also, if you like channel updates or more personal updates, stick to the end because that's sort of when I cover that kind of stuff if you're interested in it. But let's hop into the rankings. Now, I do want to preface this with all of these classes. The way I'm going to rank them is based on a combination of different things and not purely just based on the grade I received. Pretty much all the rankings I ever do on a tier list are my opinion, my experience, so I'm going to try to explain it. But basically, I'm going to rank these or at least consider the grade I received, as well as how enjoyable the class was, how interesting the class was, overall how difficult it was, how was the workload, how was the professor, things like that. So this first one is CSE 11, and if you're not familiar, CSE is just the acronym used by UCSD for CS classes, it just stands for Computer Science and Engineering. And CSE 11 was Introduction to Object Oriented Programming in Java, so it's basically just a Java programming course. Honestly, it was pretty good, I think. It was, you know, a very standard, just programming intro level class. I thought the assignments were very, very fair. I thought they were interesting, and I thought they were, you know, up to par for what a, com a freshman computer science student should know. Very reminiscent of the AP computer science class, if you've taken it. And honestly, I really enjoyed the class. I thought the professor was really cool. It was just an overall good intro class to like the computer science curriculum. So I think that's gonna be a solid A tier. Now this next one was CSC 12. Now CSC 12 was basic data structures. And for some reason, the professor I had at UCSD made the class way more difficult than it really needed to be. Like he made it so hard like incredibly confusing and really hard. If you've taken it with other professors or at other universities, you're probably like, oh, basic data structure is super easy. I know that now, but during the time I was taking it, I was like, oh my God. I'm like, why was this, why is this so hard? He literally made everything so difficult. The programming assignments were actually insanely difficult. The grading was hard. The class wasn't even interesting. And it didn't, I had no idea what I was doing most of the time. In essence, I didn't really love this class. So, uh, that's gonna be probably F tier. And in that class, you basically just cover, as the name implies, basic data structures, which is just, you know, like linked lists, stacks, queues, like things that are basic. And you'd think that'd be easy, but this class was just way harder than it needed to be. Now, this next class is CSE 15L, which was a lab class where they basically teach you the tools and the more logistical side of computer science. So whereas other classes teach you, you know, what to program, this is sort of like, how do you actually code? So you learn different IDEs, you learn like source control, like Git, a lot of Vim commands, things like that. And you actually had to take this in conjunction with the previous class I mentioned. And so it, was, it only met like once a week for, you know, an hour or so. Pretty easy, very tangible class. You got some more IDEs under your belt, so you knew, you know, what you were kind of looking for in one. You know, I thought it was a good class, but you know, I'll, I think that's a solid B tier. Now this one is CSE 20, which is discrete mathematics. Now I know what you're thinking. You're like, wait, Michael, you said this is all computer science classes. Well, computer science students do have to take math classes and this is one of those computer science math classes. Discrete math. Discrete math is a big subject in a lot of areas of computer science. You cover things like induction, proofs, permutations, things like that. And I remember in this class, there wasn't really any programming assignments that I remember. Most of every, all of the homework assignments were all just, you know, like problem sets because everything had to deal with, okay, how do you like actually prove this, like using induction? How are you proving like this recursion? How are you proving this runtime? Things like that. Honestly, I didn't love the class 
it was, I felt like it was sort of hard to grasp in the beginning. I also don't totally remember it. So I think it's gonna be C tier, to be honest. Now the next class is CSC 21, which is the subsequent class of CSC 20. And this one was the mathematics of algorithms and systems. So again, it was a very math heavy computer science class. And I don't really remember ever doing programming in that class, just like CSC 20 and more just doing problem sets. It felt more of like a continuation of CSC 20. I really don't know where they differed. So we would go over things like finite automata and enumerative, enumerator, enumerative combinatorics. But honestly, it's just very similar to CSC 20. And honestly, I don't even remember too much of what we covered. But it was interesting that both CSC 20 and CSC 21 weren't actually requirements for my major, but they were prerequisite requirements for classes that were required. And you'll actually see this in your computer science education where you might see like, you're like, oh, this is not too many requirements, but in order to get to that class, to be able to take that class, you have to take a specific number or a specific set of prerequisite classes that may not themselves actually be requirements. So this was the case for that, where CSC 20 and CSC 21, I think they were prerequisites for CSC 100 or CSC 101. And CSC 101 was a major requirement. So in order to take that class, I had to take these two classes. So, but they end up counting as electives, which, you know, kind of weird too. But overall, I think CSC 21 is gonna go in C tier as well. Now this next one is CSC 30, which is computer organization and systems programming. Now I've raved about this class in previous videos. If you wanna hear my top five favorite computer science classes I took in college, I made a video like previously about that subject. And this is one of the classes. And we basically use like assembly and a little bit of C and you really get like down deep into like very low level programming. I honestly thought it was really, really interesting. I thought the homework assignments were very fair. I thought you could do them relatively well. They weren't too hard. They weren't too easy. The professor seemed like a really cool person. Seemed like he knew what he was talking about, made the class interesting. I've mentioned this stuff before. I really like this class. I found it really interesting. So I think it's honestly gonna be uh, an S tier, to be honest. Now the next class is CSE 100, which is advanced data structures. So as opposed to basic data structures, which is sitting down in F tier, advanced data structures, I actually liked way, way more. So this class was exclusively in C++, and I, again, I've talked about this class before, but the professor was absolutely amazing, made the class super, super interesting. The programming assignments were honestly some of the most fair programming assignments or just homework assignments in college, like not too easy and not too hard. They were like the perfect amount of difficulty where you still felt that level of accomplishment, but it also like didn't give you like dread because it felt impossible. And you'd cover things like, you know, unbalanced trees, priority queues, things like that. And I was taking this class while I was preparing for software engineering internship interviews. So getting a lot of that practice with the programming assignments made it feel a lot more useful. And really just after taking this class, I actually felt confident in programming sort of for the first time in my college career. And this was like junior and sophomore year or something like that. And I actually wanted a tutor for this class, but unfortunately the tutor positions were not open, but that's how much I actually really, really like this class. Fantastic professor. So that is easily another S tier class. Now the next one is CSE 101, which is design and analysis of algorithms. And you basically just cover all of the popular algorithms out there like BFS, DFS, Dijkstra's sorting algorithms, all the important algorithms you should know as a computer science student. And I remember the class being, you know, somewhat difficult. I don't actually remember what our programming assignments were like or if they were more problem sets. I don't totally remember. Interesting type class. I got, I did get bored because the class you didn't actually have to attend. You could watch recordings. So a lot of people just ended up not going to class. So if you did go to class, you were like the one out of five people that were there, or you could just watch the recording at like double speed or whatever. I wasn't totally interested in that class. I thought it was very useful. I thought it was, you know, kind of okay. You know, it's an important subject though. So I think 
it, it should go in B tier. Now this class is CSE 105, which was the theory of computability, and this was a, an extreme theoretical computer science class. You cover things like Turing machines, theoretical computer science problems like P versus NP stuff, different levels of proofs. It's a big extension of CSE 20 and CSE 21, and honestly just a ton of theoretical computer science stuff. Some people really like theoretical computer science, I didn't love theoretical computer science. I love the more application and tangible stuff. Honestly, this class I struggled with a little bit. I didn't love it. It was interesting, but we never had any programming assignments. Everything was a problem set. So mm, I thought the professor was really cool, but I think the subjects were just a little bit difficult to grasp. Like in once you start getting into very theoretical computer science stuff, Honestly, this class I think could be, you know, high C tier, low B tier, but we can throw it in, we can throw it in C. Now this next class is extreme computing, and I've mentioned this class before. This is the one class I took while studying abroad at the University of Edinburgh in Scotland, and we basically go over distributed computing and big data processing. And honestly, this class was fantastic. It was super interesting, really, really cool, really, really different from any other class that I've taken because Pretty much like every other lecture, we had a, you know, a software engineer or some type of manager come in and tell us about how the technologies we're learning about they're using in their respective tech companies. So people like from Google, from Amazon or from Microsoft or from some other big tech companies. And it made like the whole class feel way more useful and tangible to be like, hey, like what we're learning right here, like they actually use Apache Spark or they use Hadoop at Google. It was also a really different structured class where as all of these other classes were at UCSD, you usually had, you know, a programming assignment or some problem set every week. You had like one or two midterms and then you had a final exam and then you had like participation sometimes. Whereas in this class, you literally only had one programming assignment and one final exam. That was it. That was like basically your entire grade. So the programming assignment we had was basically manipulating the IMDB data set. I mentioned this again in my top five computer science classes I took in college. Very, very interesting stuff. And it actually made me way more interested in distributed computing and big data processing as that like subfield of computer science. And that really sparked an interest in me, I guess. And that's one of the fields that I actually really, really like in computer science. Would really love to do more work in that area. So honestly, this class was fantastic. Cool professor, very different structure. I was studying abroad, so it honestly made it better. Really, really just interesting stuff and spark interest. So that's again, another S tier computer science class. Now we're down to the last two classes. This next one was CSC 190, which was web application performance and maintenance. Now I took the took this at the end of my senior year in college. It was fully remote, but it was super, super tangible. Really, really interesting stuff basically goes over just, you know, how do you build and deploy small and efficient websites? And the whole selling point was, okay, if your website loads faster, there's less of a chance that, you know, users will bounce from the website or, you know, a higher chance of them actually signing up for something or purchasing something. So a very, very tangible sort of metric to measure. And honestly, it was just really interesting about all of the technologies that are available out there and sort of just the fundamentals of web development in general. And the professor overall just knew his stuff a lot. Like he was a great professor. I think he had his own like web dev company or companies. He just knew a lot about modern web development and even non-modern web development. It was a really, really interesting class. Great professor. He knew his stuff a lot. The programming assignments were really fair. I thought they did a great job at teaching what we learned. I thought they were, you know, not too stressful, especially when it's fully remote and we didn't really have any tutors for that class. A very, very interesting and a very tangible class. And I actually really, really liked it. And uh, I'm glad I took that class. So honestly, I think that is definitely a solid A tier class. And lastly, this class is actually not a computer science class. Okay, I know. It's a math class that was introduction to mathematical softwares, but it is very similar to a computer science class. So I wanted to include it. It basically goes over all of the different sort of programming languages, specifically like Python, R, MATLAB, and how they can be used in you know, solving math problems. And honestly, as someone whose major was math and computer science, this was like sort of the perfect crossover class. So we went over a lot of libraries 
and you know a lot of different methods of you know utilizing programming languages to solve mathematical problems again a very tangible class and i've noticed that at least through all of the classes that I've taken, the classes I really enjoy the most are the ones that I feel like I could actually use in a job or in the computer science industry as a software engineer or as some other technical field. So I felt like this class really fit that description where it was a very tangible class. You learned a lot of tools that you can kind of go back and be like, oh yeah, like I use this in this class, even if you're like being a software engineer or a data scientist. So I thought it was really, really interesting, very, very tangible programming assignments i do remember the programming assignments being somewhat difficult i remember them being very confusing at some points especially with matlab i ended up doing pretty well in that class and looking back on it i find it pretty pretty useful so i think that's going to be an, another solid s tier class here are the final rankings this is how it looks you'll see that a lot of the classes are actually you know skewed relatively highly you know four classes in s tier a majority of the classes being above b tier i think a generally good marker because as a computer science student, you hopefully like the classes you're taking, and I liked a majority of them. Some of them I liked a little bit less, those specifically in the C and F tier. All of these rankings can differ a lot based on professor. I've mentioned this in previous videos, but professors can absolutely make or break any class, and specifically harder classes like computer science classes, because a professor's ability to explain an in-depth topic in, you know, digestible parts is, I think, will make the class way better more under like more easily digestible i know i keep saying that you know less stressful in general and maybe more interesting as well so specifically the s tier classes on here these are where the professors really shine where i really love them and in including the a tier they were fantastic professors they made the classes extremely extremely interesting i really just found them way more beneficial compared to classes where I didn't really like the teacher's sort of lecturing style or just the way they structured the class or or maybe just the topic in general. But here's the rankings. If you want me to make a tier list of any other topics, whether that's all of the classes I took at UCSD or the math classes I took, because again, I did take a lot of math classes, feel free to comment down suggestions for videos you might want in the description below. If you stuck to the end, thanks for sticking with me. I actually just got back from a vacation in California for about a week. Uh, very nice. I forgot how nice the weather is down there compared to a lot of the rainy weather in Seattle. It's actually raining right now. That's why I was looking out the window. But thank you guys so much for watching. Again, if you want minimalist programmer merch, check out nullref.co. Some of the stuff I've been designing there. My name is Michael. We make college advice, career advice, tech, computer science content on this channel. If any of that sounds interesting, consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell notification so that you get notified whenever I upload a new video. Check out one of my past videos and my past self with Thank You Dearly. And check out one of my future videos and my future self would also thank you dearly. That's all from me. Hopefully I see you in another one. Bye-bye.